Hey everybody, John Hemans from Open Heaven Church with you again. I'm making this video in response to a whole bunch of inquiries that I've been getting from around the world about a series of prophetic visions and prophetic words that I had for the United States of America over the last month. These were posted as three separate videos, one on the 5th of June, one on the 10th of June, and one on the 25th of June. And people that have seen one without seeing the others are, are constantly emailing and messaging me, asking me where they can find the other two or whichever one they haven't seen. So what I've done with this particular video is I've put them uh, back to back in what you're about to see following this introduction um, with the first prophetic word followed by the second, followed by the third, so that you can see all three in sequence. I haven't edited them in any way. Um, so you can you can see them in their entirety and uh, what the, what I believe the Lord gave me at that time. Rest assured, I'm continuing to pray for the United States of America. Part of my heritage is the USA. Um, and so uh, I'm continuing to pray for the, the nation of, of the United States. I believe this is a crucial time in your history. If the church doesn't rise now, um, I, I hold grave fears and concerns for the future of, of your nation. So God bless you as you watch these, and I just uh, encourage you to press in in intercession, in prayer, in fasting, um, in seeking the Lord um, for uh, the future of the United States. And um, if, I, if I receive anything else from the Lord regarding the United States, I, I'll, I'll be sure to put it up. But God bless you as you watch these three videos. Hey, this is Pastor John from Open Heaven Church here in Sydney, and I'm just making public this video um, out of a vision that I had during our intercessors meeting last night, which was uh, Monday the 1st of June here in Australia. And it's to do with the United States of America. In the vision, I could see America laid out before me, the whole of uh, the United States of America, and standing on, on top of that map were these two massive... Um, figures made out of, uh, out of granite and they were very threatening. They were kind of like uh, soldiers, very military in bearing. And what they were doing was they were standing apart and then every now and then they would just charge full, like full steam ahead at each other until they collided. And when they collided, there was um, pieces of rock, pieces of shrapnel, pieces of fire just falling across the, um, the whole of the United States of America. And I could see that one of them was named fear and the other one was named hatred. And they were creating absolute chaos all over the United States. Then I saw a much smaller figure dressed in white as they backed away from each other to charge at each other again. I saw this figure come between them, a smaller figure dressed in white with his arms outstretched to prevent them from colliding against each other again. And I heard the Lord say that this is my remnant church in America standing in the gap in intercession to make sure that the enemy's plans do not come to full fruition. As I continued to watch, um, I, it was like I pulled back in the vision and I could see the rest of the world map as if it was like, you know, I could see the globe before me and in three specific areas, the southern part of Europe, in the Middle East and especially in China, I could see these um, attack dogs um, restrained by chains and their, their attention was 100% focused on the United States of America and they were snarling and they were growling and they were just waiting to be unleashed. And I heard the Lord say, these are the dogs of war. And if the, if the church is not successful in her assignment to stop the chaos in America, these dogs are going to be released in war um, against the United States of America. Now, this sounds, uh, you know, very dark, this vision, but I felt a couple of specific things out of this. The first was that as we, as we the church in Australia, came together and began praying for uh, the church in America, that bride was that that white figure that's holding apart fear and hatred was being strengthened, and there were streams of people coming out of that place, and they had been rescued out of this chaos. And uh, I, I, I felt like the the Lord was saying that that the church must rise in into her kingdom assignment and her kingdom destiny in the United States of America, so that the United States of America does not lose its kingdom destiny. One of my intercessors said to me afterwards that she felt very strongly that one of the key assignments of the enemy in this attack was to separate the United States in its relationship to Israel. 
and that its protection over Israel would be very badly damaged if the chaos continued. I also felt um, very strongly that even though the situation was so critical, that even though it was such a dire um, thing that was happening over there, that God has appointed his church to victory and that as the church begins to rise, as the church begins to fast and pray and declare and decree, pray out and intercede for um, fear and hatred to be separated and to be bound in the name of Jesus, that God's kingdom destiny was going to be released in the United States of America. And um, that there was a, there was an awakening that could come out of the back of this. There was a a, 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 a move of the Holy Spirit that was going to come um, out of this chaos, and that that God's kingdom purpose for America has not been changed, but He's asking His church to rise. I hope that this is an encouragement to you. We in the church here in Australia are so aware of what's happening in the United States and we're standing with you. We're praying, we're interceding, we're prophesying, we're declaring, we're decreeing. We believe the back of this chaos in America is going to be broken and there's going to be awakening and revival and a move of the Holy Spirit in that place. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you guys. And I hope my next next time I get on here and release a vision about the US, I hope it's one that's, a story of revival it, um, instead of something that, that seems so threatening. But God is on your side and we're backing you in prayer. Hey everybody, this is Pastor John again from Open Heaven Church here in Sydney. And uh, this is really a sequel to a prophetic word that I released on June the 2nd to do with the church in the United States of America. In that video, I talked about how I saw um, a couple of giant strong men facing off across the surface of the United States um, called fear and hatred and they were constantly running at each other and colliding and as they collided they released chaos all over the United States of America and I saw a smaller figure dressed in white who I identified as the remnant bride the remnant church of Jesus in America uh, stand up and come between them with her arms outstretched in intercession in prayer in fasting um, in the prophetic in declaring and decreeing the promises of God over the nation of America, the United States. And as she did so, those two forces, those strong men were held at bay. I also saw attack dogs um, being held on giant chains uh, positioned in China, in Southern Europe and in the Middle East. And their focal point was, their focus was entirely upon the United States of America. And I heard the Lord saying that those dogs of war would be released unless the bride in America rose up in her assignment um, and kingdom authority to see um, the nation of America restored to its destiny. So over the last few days, I've felt the Lord giving me kind of a, a sequel to that prophetic vision. And in this particular vision, I felt the Lord drawing me into a closer view of where that uh, remnant bride was standing as uh, she stood against uh, fear and hatred. And what I could see was underneath her feet, um, there was a crack opening up beneath her. And uh, I heard the Lord say the word crevasse. And as I looked closer, I realized she was actually standing on... Um, uh, uh, like a, a, a bed of ice, you're standing on ice and this crevasse was opening up in the ice. As I saw that, I simultaneously saw that the whole uh, foundation of that ice would drop uh, again and again, a, a few feet at a time each time. And if you've ever been in a, an elevator or a lift um, where the, the elevator has been descending and then um, it's it's dropped a, f a few inches and then shuttered to a halt, creates a bit of a shock wave within the elevator. It was kind of like that, but on a massive scale, with shock waves being created, and I, I could see that this uh, that this figure was quite alarmed by what was happening. I heard the Lord saying in those moments that the church was not to be alarmed, that the church uh, was not to be dismayed, that um, the that these shock waves had to come and that they were going to be continuing um, for some time because the ice that the remnant bride was standing on actually represents cold, dead, hard foundations 
that must be removed for awakening and restoration to come. And the reason he was saying don't be alarmed is because it's the fire of the Holy Spirit returning to the church that's actually burning away from underneath those false, cold, dead foundations. And that as those shockwaves come, you're actually coming closer and closer to bedrock, which is the actual true foundation of the Word and the Spirit that the bride in America has always been called to stand on. Um, and those drops are an indication of his fire returning to the church. Um, then I, I heard him say something very unusual because uh, I heard him say, do not forget the former things. Now, that's pretty much the opposite of what it says in Isaiah 43, 18, where the Bible says to forget the former things because he's going to do something new. But as I waited on the Lord, I felt the Lord take me to Deuteron Deuteronomy 4, verses 9 to 10, and this whole thing began to make a lot more sense. Deuteronomy 4, verses 9 to 10 is... Um, at a time where Israel has come out of um, out of her bondage, she's on her journey through the wilderness. She's just had an encounter at Mount Sinai, and Moses is speaking to the children of Israel and and admonishing them about their future. And he says this: "Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen." That's like, do not forget the former things, right? And lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life and teach them to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb when the Lord said to me, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may teach their children. And I heard the Lord saying that the United States has hosted great moves of the Holy Spirit. It's had these incredible encounters um, with the Lord, especially Azusa Street, the beginning of the 20th century. Um, but in recent times, the fires, those fires of revival have burned low and the fear of the Lord has been absent from the church. God is saying he's bringing the fear of the Lord back to his bride. He's also saying to you that even as this great conflict is taking place in the spiritual realm, God is saying, I am awakening more and more reinforcements to come alongside you. The remnant church in America is being strengthened in this season. He is returning the prophetic to you, the genuine prophetic, the, the soft, sugary um, words that have been so prevalent in recent times in the prophetic is being done away with and the pure um, fiery word of the Lord is being returned to his church as reinforcements are coming alongside you fire is being returned to the church and that fire is desperately needed because um, the other part of what I saw around the bride was that just as I saw these um, attack dogs on leashes positioned in southern Europe positioned in um, in China and positioned in the Middle East, I also saw in this particular vision that there were attack dogs actually positioned within the borders of the United States of America. They were rejoicing over the division that the enemy has caused and they were trying to foment rebellion and trying to foment the downfall of America. But God is saying, I am with you. I am strengthening my remnant church. You are coming back to a sure, firm foundation. The fire is coming to you. The fire is going to purify. It's going to bring the remnant out of where she has been back into a position of authority, um, where she has always been called to stand. You are going to intercede fast, pray, declare, decree, and prophesy. And I believe that as the church responds to the call of God, as reinforcements are being added, so the um, awakening is going to come to the United States of America. The foundation of that awakening will be prayer, will be the fear of the Lord, will be repentance, and everything else will stream from that. If you have not seen uh, part one of this video, I'm going to put um, a link to that video in the comments below so you can see the whole thing in context. I hope this is an encouragement to you because um, God is saying, I'm with you. I'm with my church. I'm, restor I'm restoring my glory to the church. Um, those Pentecostal churches that have become Pentecostal in name only as the intercessors rise. So the fire is going to come back to the church and we're going to see some extraordinary 
extraordinary things happen um, over the coming months. I hope this uh, video is a blessing to you and an encouragement to you. And uh, just rest assured that we are praying for you here in Australia because we realize that this is a crucial moment in America's history. God bless you and pray, <laughs> pray on fast in the seed because change is coming. Amen. John Heeman's with you again. This is part three of uh, a prophetic word that the Lord has been progressively releasing to me over the last few weeks over the United States of America. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I encourage you to have a look at those um, in tandem with this one because they all fit together. And I'll also be putting a video up of the three videos put together so that... Um, for those of you who haven't seen parts one and two, you'll, you'll understand this one a lot better if you've seen the previous ones. So today's the 25th of June, and uh, so this third word that the Lord's been releasing to me has been a progressive thing that's happened over the last couple of weeks from about the 11th of June till now. And uh, I was really disturbed by a couple of things that I saw, and there's been a couple of times in the last week or so where I've woken up in the middle of the night and I can only describe it as a foreboding that I felt in my spirit about the things that are coming next to the United States of America. But this is not uh, a doom and gloom word. This is a, a, a word that's going to encourage and strengthen those of you who are standing in prayer and intercession, standing in the gap in faith for the future of the, the nation of the United States of America. God still has a destiny over the U.S. and um, and so I, I just want to release what, what um, the Lord's been showing me. And um, I mentioned in part two of my prophetic vision that there were successive shocks coming to the United States. And just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen what happened in Seattle. We saw um, uh, uh, that, 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 um, that, that black man um, in the Wendy's parking lot who was unfortunately killed by um, a police officer and all the furor that, that came out of that. There's also been a lot of disinformation being spread by media about the state of how things are in the US. We've seen the exposure of agendas um, at play politically across the US, particularly being pushed by media. And we've even seen the pulling down of monuments across the USA. And I was particularly disturbed to see a video that appeared to be the pulling down of the statue of um, the person who wrote um, the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem, and that's uh, uh, there's some prophetic intent behind that act, and I believe that God um, is wants to raise the church up um, to greater levels of intercession to see that that um, the nation is not um, completely pulled apart. But in my most recent vision. I saw, as it were, a huge final shock um, that stopped America in its tracks. It's almost as if the whole nation had the pause button hit as they tried to deal with what had just happened. I don't know what the nature of this shock is. I know it's coming. I know it's coming soon. And um, it's going to give everybody pause. Everybody's going to stop in their tracks and go, do we really want to continue down this road? Um, I saw that simultaneously as part of this, there was a further sifting of the remnant church, a, a purification, as it were, when this happens. And, and this shock seemingly had the capacity to knock the remnant church off its feet and off its place of intercession and standing in the gap between fear and hatred. But because it had been strengthened throughout the previous shocks by increased numbers standing in the gap, by an increase in prayer, in fasting, in intercession, um, it, it stood. And the largest shock that had actually broken through the last remaining ice and now the remnant church was standing on bedrock because the fire had come and uh, burned away the false foundations under that ice and now the church was standing on solid rock and could actually stand in authority. During this final shock, I saw many things happening. I saw that the church had been crying out for the refiner's fire and as that fire came to the church, I saw um, wolves being exposed in the body of Christ and they were fleeing out of the refiner's fire. Um, churches that had built, uh, churches and ministries that had been built on false foundations um, were, were just collapsing in, in the wake of the refiner's fire coming as it, 
exposed all sorts of things that were totally ungodly within the body of Christ. I also saw um, cities being highlighted across America. The Lord did not give, give me the names of those cities, but what I could see was there were two types, two types of cities that God was highlighting to me. The first kind were um, cities that were lit up, it seemed almost literally by hellfire. It was as if they had a red glow over them because of the demonic activity, the demonic forces at play within their, within their boundaries. And uh, they were in complete turmoil because of all this trouble. But I saw that there were other cities that were lit by a holy fire. And the light that shone from them was pure, brilliant, white, and could be seen from across the nation. They stood as beacons of hope in the midst of troubled times, and they were cities of hope and beacons of hope because they were lit up by the strength and purity of the churches within their boundaries. I saw these cities as having churches that were going hard after the presence of God. And I heard the Lord say that I am tearing down the old structures that have hindered the move of my Holy Spirit. In the midst of chaos in the United States, I will surround with favor those churches who honor my presence. If you've ever had a heart and a hunger to go hard after God, now is the season to press in. These churches and these cities will be beacons of hope and lighthouses from which will pour deliverance, healing and restoration of broken lives. I also heard the Lord say that these places would be miraculously provided for Revival is coming to these places and to these cities, but it will not be orderly or scripted. There is a bit of a Pentecostal tradition in the United States of America that if, you, uh, if you're going to have revival, you invite this preacher in and he's there for a week and the church is strengthened, those sorts of things. There's not going to be an, an orderly kind of... Um, this is not going to be an orderly outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is going to be a fire of God that comes and hits these churches. There'll be nothing orderly about it. Um, there will be nothing scripted about it. It will be an outpouring. I heard the Lord say this specifically. This will be an outpouring that no man can control or bend toward their own gain. That's a very important facet, that bending toward their own gain. Plenty of people have tried to profit from moves of God in the past. This will be a kingdom revival where my servants will shine in humility and love and through whom I will pour out my spirit in absolutely unprecedented measure. Um, finally, at the, at the end of this, this um, visionary process and the, the, the word that the Lord has been releasing to me over the last couple of weeks, I heard the Lord say specifically to keep your eyes on the state of Wisconsin um, something that will have a profound impact on the nation is going to occur there. Now, um, the last time the Lord gave me a word like this was um, when I was preparing a, um, a, a prophetic word for our church at the beginning of um, 2019. And as uh, the Lord gave me some specifics about what was happening in Europe, I heard him say, Keep your eye, keep your eyes on the nation of Ukraine. And all the way through, I was watching Ukraine. I knew that Chernobyl was there. I knew that there were that there were all sorts of um, dramas playing out in that country. But what the reason that the Lord was highlighting the Ukraine was what was about to happen with the impeachment of Donald Trump. And so um, I see that that um, in this current situation, God is is asking. The church in the United States of America, those who see this video, part of the remnant church, um, to keep your eyes on the state of Wisconsin because something is going to happen there that's going to have a profound effect on the United States of America. And when that happens, you will have an absolute confirmation that this is a, a true prophetic word and that God is coming in revival. He is going to protect his church. He is going to surround with favor those who go after his presence. So in closing, I just want to encourage you to fast, to pray, to intercede, to worship, to prophesy, to declare and to decree from your position in authority that the United States of America will remain a nation of destiny under God and will return to its true foundations and not be drawn away any further. God bless you. If I get some more from the Lord about the U.S., um, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll be putting it, putting it up on these platforms, but 
I, I want to bless you and I want to, want to finish by praying for you guys. Lord, I just pray for everybody who watches this video, who's part of that, 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 uh, that remnant church in the United States of America that is so desperate for a move of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Father God, you would strengthen them. You would encourage them. You would surround them with favor, Lord, that they would have unexpected blessings coming from left, right and center, not because they're, um, not because they're pursuing the blessing, but because they're pursuing you and you surround them with your favor and you strengthen them. You draw others alongside them. You help them to disciple those who come into the kingdom as a part of this new wave of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, for everything that you're going to do. I ask your blessing upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you guys. Hope to see you again.